Well, hello. Welcome to the studio. This is a um, parrot tulip from the garden. I thought I better hurry up and paint it before they dis the, the weather changes totally um, and all my tulips are gone. So right now um, I took a canvas and I did a wash of ultramarine blue um, ivory black and transparent red oxide and I just take either a paper towel or if I want detail I'll take a um, brush with a little bit of Gamsol and I'll wipe away the areas that I want enlightened. Now if some of the things are darker I don't worry about taking it off I'll just go over it and really I like a little bit of it being in there um, and kind of affecting the colors that I'm using, but I don't want it too much because I don't, I want my bright colors to still be bright. Now on my palette, these are just leftover paints from a couple of other paintings that I was doing. And so I just took them off my regular canvas and I put them on a little piece of wood just so that you could see, um, my palette is way too big. It's just a little drawer that I use. Uh, that went with my Pache box and it's got glass on it um, Maybe in time I'll get a different one But for right now, I just took some of those leftover paints and I put them on on that board um, So here I have ivory um, No, let me start at the very top with ultramarine blue ivory black transparent red oxide um, yellow ochre Cadmium yellow. I think I had a mixture that that green that was in between the ochre and the cadmium is um, a mixture of cadmium and cadmium and um, ultramarine marine blue with a little bit of black. Um, and that's usually for my green. So my green on my leaves. That's usually the mixture I use. Um, sometimes. I said a little bit of yellow ochre in there, sometimes a little bit of, if it's a little bit more on the red side, then I'll add transparent red oxide. Um, but a lot of times I see, you know, and even I do myself, I, I try to make my greens a little bit brighter than they actually are. Greens tend to have a little bit of black. Um, they tend to be more muted than um, in nature than what we usually think of, you know, green leaves or... Um, green stems so I add um, black to kind of tone it down muted it down all right so below the cadmium is um, deep rose and that is by Old Holland and it's one of the few colors that I'm very um, f um, you know picky about the the brand that I get and below that is um, titanium white now, my palette is bigger than that. I think there's another, um, I want to say that there's at least another, one other video where I go through my, um, all the paints that I use, usually what I put in place, but for something quick like this, I, um, it, and like I said, it's just whatever I have left over. Now, um, as I, I explained before, my I don't paint a la prima usually. Uh, every once in a while, I'll have a painting where I really like where it's going and I don't want to mess it up. I, I like how the painting finished at the end of the day. And so I'll keep it that way. Um, but for the most part, I, it usually takes like two or three days of painting. And I don't do them like two or two, three days in a row. I normally wait a couple days until it gets a little tacky, um, sometimes the next day, but other times it takes about two, three days. It gets a little bit of tacky, and then the paint, I feel like, stays in place. It doesn't move around as much because it's oil paint, um, and so I like that. I find it easier to, to add paint to it, um, and like I said, to move it around. Um, to mix and to overlay paint at the same time. So 
I said it usually takes me three days and um, which means a painting is usually about a week uh, and, and I never paint just one I usually have like two or three paintings that I'm working on at a time sometimes more um, and I just switch between between them so this one um, the first day I'm trying to find the colors um, the biggest the biggest part of the first day is composition is where I want um, everything to be and sometimes that is that has to do with the size of the object sometimes the number of the objects sometimes it's the color you know if you don't want too much of one color in one area and so all that plays into um, that composition that very first day by the second day, I want the composition to be where I want it to be. It doesn't mean that change, um, changes aren't going to be made, but that that was my priority for the first day. So on this one, um, my tulip was a little bit taller, and so I would have had to make it really, really slender in order to fit the composition of this painting. So instead, what I did is I shortened, um, whenever I drew it, I shortened the length of my tulip. I kind of kept the width at the same rate, um, but the proportions changed a bit just so that I could fit it onto my canvas. And and remember, you are, you're not just trying to copy what you, um, but you're wanting to paint. I mean, in some cases that might be the case, but you know, if you're doing a portrait or something like that, you don't want to be messing with the proportions. However, um, when you are, you know, painting a flower, paint, you know, most things, you can play with the proportions a bit and um, to get them to fit, you know, your, your th that composition that you're looking for. It is very, very dry here. Surprisingly, it's spring and usually it's rainy and muggy. Um, but I don't think we've had rain in a while. So it's very dry. It's mm. I have another video that I'm working on on roses. And I already did um, day one a couple of days ago. And so I'm working on day two today, so I'll have that one up um, pretty soon. So if you haven't subscribed, I hope that you will. You'll consider subscribing and watching some of those other videos. And said so there's there's at least another video where I have all my tools, my the brushes that I use, the uh, my entire palette, um, the mediums. Now, if I haven't mentioned at the top right hand corner was my medium and in that case it was oleo gel by um gamsol no i'm sorry by natural pigments um and i really like that one because it's it's not very oily and it tends to dry you know at a medium speed it's not too um it's not too fast or too slow so that in a couple of days um, it'll be tacky and I can work on it and then um, it, it tends to dry pretty you know um, fast after that after you, you layer it some and so I really enjoy that one I also use the Gamlin's um, oil medium and every once in a while if I'm working on a larger composition then um, then I use a little bit of half Gamsol and half um, oil gel. No, I'm sorry. Um, well, not oil. Now, I do not like the editing part <laughs> or the recording part. Um, so you'll have to excuse all my ums. And um, <laughs> there it goes. Um, and just the fact that, you know, sometimes I have to correct myself as I go along. Um, because it's really hard to take the time to make videos, and so I don't like to spend 
too much time on the recording, you know, portion of it. But I do want to explain it well. So if you have any questions, I hope you'll leave it in, um, leave them in the comments. And I'll try to explain, um, better explain it. Maybe written, I, I'll do better. Now on here, uh, sometimes I try to uh, make my my little my brighter colors right away i want those colors to be brighter and more um, saturated than they will be later on and so i'm not too worried about it not looking identical to my tulip right now um i'm just trying to see okay this is going to be my brightest pinks and these are going to be where I have my brightest yellows or greens, that kind of chartreuse color in the middle. And then I can go back and change it on my second part. Um, I'm also not worrying about my exact shape. So if you notice, my tulip is a little bit wider than on what I'm making it right now. Um, but that bottom part or the edges they tend to be more muted and they go towards that background and so I will blur it out towards the background on that second day um, but I'm not too worried right now about you know okay how thick is this I just want to know where it is I want to know where those colors are where that tulip is um, where the big shapes are um, later on, I'll worry about edges, reflections, and details. So, I was debating on putting music on here, but um, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. This is just a quick sketch. And um, later on, maybe I will... Later on, maybe I will um, <laughs> spend some time on adding music. But for right now... You can just, you know, like if you don't want to hear the explanation and you just like to see the painting, the, the, the process, then um, I hope that you'll find you have some wonderful music to listen to as you do. Now, this is not, this is just a piece of plywood that I, I use as a paint palette for right now. Um... And it could be anything. It could be a piece of wax paper. It, it doesn't really matter. The palette that I use is um, glass. I have a piece of... Um, I painted it gray in the background. It's a piece of paper that I painted. Um, and I take that back. I think I painted the drawer gray. And I just put the glass on top. At any rate, it's got a, a like a neutral gray in the background. I am debating if to change that. I think I'm going to experiment with doing it a little bit lighter, or maybe um, maybe even a more neutral. Maybe it needs a little bit more yellow, because it does affect how you mix your colors, the color of your palette. Um, some artists make a neutral background. And um, when they use a handheld wooden palette, they'll tend to paint the, um, take mixture of paints and paint their background so that it, their, their palette so that it makes a neutral background. There's some gorgeous palettes out there where you know it's taken them years to hone that, that neutral color in that background. Um, just absolutely beautiful. But I'm not that patient. Which is why I tend to paint small. Um, you know, for the longest time I taught. And so having the time to paint and um, teach, it was, um, it was pretty challenging. I admire all the people who do. But I, um, you know, so I it, painting small helped a lot because then I could get it um, get something done in a couple of weeks. Um, just a little bit of time here and there. Well, it's coming towards an end and I had not realized that it had stopped recording, um, for a minute there. So it'll be, um, 
just a few more i'll spend a few more minutes on this but i already have everything where i want it and um so now i'm going to take a few pictures and come back to this in a couple of days so i'll help you come back and watch um and see where it's going and please let me know like i said if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them have a wonderful day